Hello again, in this series I will be looking at how you can add minor details to your sculpts quickly and easily using texture brushes. You can find the first two videos in the description and there'll be cards in the corner. This video will be looking at how you can create your own brushes and you can find this course and other free courses like this on gabbit.co.uk and do ask any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Alternatively, you can go to the Discord server and ask questions there or just chat and maybe join in some of the competitions. Now before I begin, I want to show you a video from John Mervyn, and I'll put the link in the description. He's done an exceptional job of explaining how to do this. It isn't in Blender 2.8, but the process is exactly the same. So I don't want to recreate the wheel and do the same thing as he's done. So this is a great way of creating textures. It's relatively complex, but it does create good results. Now what I'm going to show you in my video is how you can take any texture and turn it into a texture brush, or an alpha as it's more commonly known. So I've typed into Google texture, and I'm going to find a random image texture. I've got it labeled for reuse and modification. And I'm gonna scroll down and find the jagged rock texture here and get a high resolution of it. So make sure your image is high resolution. And I'll download that. Now I'll quickly set up my workspace Control 5 on my cube, apply the subdivision surface modifier under the spanner that's been created, and then add a new modifier, multi-resolution modifier. I'll subdivide it a few times, probably turn it up to 5. And I've got 6 million faces. That's quite a nice number for my computer to handle. I'll go across to Sculpt Mode, zoom in just a touch, and I'll bring out my panel on the side, and I'm going to create a new one just here, and change this to the textures. And also, I'll minimize this little menu here. So that was fairly quick, but that's in the previous episodes. I'm not going to create a new brush this time. I'm just going to use the texture draw just for demonstration. And under the texture, I'll create a new texture. That creates it over here as well. And I'll open up that texture that I've just downloaded. And there it is just there. And I will change my brush type. So I'll just minimize the texture for a moment. And I'll change the brush stroke to an anchor. So I can now pull out and you can see the results of the texture. So there's a fair bit I need to do before this texture starts working. You can see that there's far too much detail in it, but it's quite clever that you can take any texture and bring it in and get some sort of result. But ideally this needs to be a black and white texture and it needs to be blurred just a bit and kind of turn into a displacement texture. I'll just undo that. Let's see what happens if I turn the strength right down and see what it looks like. So it's good to know you can take any texture like this and bring it in and it does kind of work as long as you've got it on a low detail because of the high contrast within the image. But we want something that looks more like jaggedy rocks. So let's undo that. So in order to turn this image into an image we can use, I'm going to use Materialize. I'll put a link in the description for a quick start guide, but you can follow me along here. I'll also put a link in the description for the download. It's completely free. So all I have to do here is I want to create a diffuse map and then from that I create my height map or sometimes known as a displacement map. And yes, it is worth noting that any well-made displacement map you will be able to use as a brush alpha. So let's open up an image. There's my jagged rocks. I'll click on that and press select and that brings it in. All I need to do now is create my height map. So press create over here and you can see it's given me half the image and show me what it's going to look like. Now this is still a bit too sharp, so the contrast between the lights and darks is a bit too clear. If I click on displace now, that will give me quite a nice map. So almost any image, you can just bring it into here, create your height map, press displace, you can change the final gain if you think it needs a bit of editing. So there's my displacement map, like I say, you can usually just press displace and that will do a pretty good job. Generally speaking, you want something that's fairly blurry looking, especially if you want bigger details. If you're just going for fine details, then you can go for something a bit sharper where it says details, for example, or default. So I'll set that map, go up to the S and press save. I'm going to call this test two rocks and select. Now when I go back to Blender and I load up that texture instead by clicking on the folder just here and finding my file. Now when I draw, I better put the strength up a bit and I undo that. Strength up, I've created some nice rocks. Now there is one tiny issue. If I zoom in a bit, it's what's called banding. Now it's my understanding that that is because this is an 8-bit image and that means the gradients of your texture have what's called this banding going on. 
and therefore I need to convert this to a 32-bit image, which is a bit of a pain if you haven't got something like Photoshop or the GIMP, and it's just some more steps. Hopefully soon, Materialize will have that option of saving as 32-bit. You can get around this by making your brush quite big and just quickly smoothing it out, but we do lose some of our detail. So in order to convert it, we go over to Photoshop and I bring in my rock texture. I go up to the image menu, click mode, and then change it to 32 bits. Now what I've found is if I save it now, it doesn't actually remove any of the banding because I haven't actually done anything to the image. So I just quickly go into the filter, down to the blur, and choose a Gaussian blur. Yes, this will blur your image slightly more, but just bring it down to about 0.1, press OK. You can hardly see any difference, but now when I save it, file save as. You can use just a Photoshop image, and that will work fine, and a TIFF image works well as well. So I'll save that, make sure it is on the 32-bit, and press OK. Now when I go back into Blender, I'll undo what I've done here, and I'll open up the texture I just brought in. This TIFF one here, open the image, and now hopefully, you can see there's still a tiny bit of banding still there, which is a bit of a pain, and that means I needed to blur my image slightly more. So when you're in Materialize, and you're setting your height map, if you want to make it a really good brush, then perhaps go to the default rather than the displace. Then from there, take it into a program, blur it, make sure it's 32-bit, and you'll have your brush. Sounds like a bit of a process, but it is worth it for being able to use any image texture as a brush, especially when you can't find a particular brush to do the job. Hopefully soon Materialize will have an option to save in 32-bit, so that will negate doing the last step there. So that's the end of this particular course in sculpting. I'll do more tips and tricks in future episodes, so do get along to gabbit.co.uk and look out for those. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.